Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about dive cases. We're talking about dive cases for the Insta360 X3 right here. I plan to go over my experience that I had with using this dive case on a dive trip. I've also used the GoPro 11 and then the Action 2 and then I had a GoPro 9 somebody else was using. And I kind of want to get a gauge off of those, what, it, what it's like to use those and what it looks like on footage versus the Insta360 X3 when it comes to diving. We all know what the X3 looks like when it comes to the outside world, beautiful sunshine. It looks great, but how does it work underneath the water and all that stuff? So that's what this video is about. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience with the camera, using it on the trip. And at the end of this video, there'll be footage. So you can look through, it'll tell you what's the Insta X3, what's the Action 2, uh, it's all been kind of graded a little bit. What I use, I use Aqua 2.0, did I use Clarity, did I use Color Plus, or did I use nothing at all? And then kind of worked it in post and editing to kind of make it look a little bit better. All right, first thing first, uh, I had some issues with the X3 using it in the dive case underwater. And I lost a lot of footage. So that's not really the best thing to hear. I didn't have, I don't have any type of screenshots of the error because I was like below the water. So, uh, and that's the only time I saw it happen. But as I was using it and recording with it, I pressed record and it would start recording. And then an error would come up saying no longer can write to memory card. Uh, and I've had this issue a little bit before back in the past when it comes to files not, or the SD card not working correctly. And that was the original SD card from Insta that was given to me, or that was not given to me, I paid for it. That was included with the package. And I then switched to SanDisk cards, the little red, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, the ones I use for most of all my cameras. And I, and I reformat all these cards. So it's not a matter of I, I didn't reformat it or I pulled it out of the computer, that kind of thing like that. I take care of my cards, I format them when I put them in. And I even double format sometimes just to make sure on fix it. Hey, nobody cares. Nobody cares. The error I was getting was that I couldn't write the memory card. It would start recording the video, and then about two or three seconds later, it would come up with an error. And I would have to shut down the camera, restart it, and it started recording again after that. I didn't know it then, but it was a 50-50 shot whether that footage would even come out. And I lost a, a, a pretty much a whole dive and more than when you're down there filming you're filming a little bit you're stopping you're filming a little bit stopping so probably i lost maybe 50 percent of my footage i think throughout the trip with eras and sd cards i used a, a selfie stick uh one time where i extended it out and used it to go dive in this way now that's what i what kind of wanted to look at too and i lost all of that footage i don't know where that went uh, it was no longer on the card it had some things from the day before but nothing from that day of recording after I got that error. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Other than that, at times it did work. So we're gonna talk about when it did work, what it looked like, what it felt like, uh, and is it worth it? So the same principles come to come to play when you talk about the Insta360 X3 versus the GoPro in the normal world. The GoPro has a better image quality, but the Insta can do things that the GoPro cannot do. It gives you that different style of look. And that's the same thing I felt after looking at the footage from under the water, minus a couple of things. And that's just the dive case itself. It's limiting, right? So you see at the bottom of the case here, and I'll show you some videos of what it looks like, but you can see that diamond look where it's the camera's actually catching part of the case and it's in the footage. So anything down below here is not really gonna be caught on camera. Uh, of course, out front, out back, to the sides, you'll get it. Um, when it comes right along this stitch line, it does a pretty good job of the stitch, but it's nothing like it is when it's on land. It, you can have, obviously see where that line of stitching is. I did hook it up with something like this here, and I had my GoPro in the dome from Telesyn, and that's how I kind of filmed with this setup. I wanted to get the GoPro footage, and I wanted to get the... Uh, Insta360 X3 footage. What was good about it was the different aspect, right? Same thing as is on land. Uh, when you're filming, especially when you're scuba diving, now the waters were really kind of cloudy where I went. Uh, it was all it was in West Palm Beach, 
Uh, the hurricane before really stirred up the water, so it was not that great when it comes to the bottom and the coral and the colors and all that kind of stuff. And still had a lot of uh, silt in the water when it comes to clarity. So that was limiting on its own for all the cameras. Uh, so it's good for catching yourself and it's good for catching things out in front of you or on the side versus like a GoPro. A GoPro, you got your single shot wherever you're pointing the cameras you're gonna catch. And a lot of times you may not catch something in your peripheral vision. It might be like a school of fish, a shark, or something like that over here that everyone saw but you missed. But with this camera, you can kind of go back to that, that spot and then look around to see what you missed. And that is what's cool about the dive case and the Insta360 X3 and the 360 camera in general under the water. Like on land, you catch things that you didn't know you might have missed on a GoPro or an Action 2 or something like that. So that's where it wins when it comes to its versatility. Now where it fails is clarity, right? When it gets down below the surface versus the GoPro, the footage is not that great. If it's looking at some coral or fish under the water, uh, the clarity between this camera and like a GoPro 11 is different. It's just, it just wins every time the GoPro does. But this is gonna give you a different style shot. Now, it's not gonna give you a removing stick look. So if you, got, if you actually use this stick under the water, which may only last you one time under the water, it's not gonna remove the stick for you in post. The stick's gonna be shown in there. The dive case is gonna be in there. So you won't get that image of you snorkeling and it looks like someone's actually filming you snorkel. You will see the stick and you will see part of the bottom of the dive case uh, in that shot. That's just where it's gonna be. If you crop in, it's not gonna look great. If you crop, you're out a good ways, get a good wide shot, it'll look pretty decent. Now, when we, some of the shots toward the surface of the water where we're going in and the sun's still hitting us, those are pretty nice shots, but as soon as that sun goes away and that light goes away, even with the light on top, it starts to diminish the clarity and the noise picks up really bad in the shot for the X3. That is my experience with the X3. Let's talk about the GoPro 11 really quick. This video is more about the X3, but the GoPro I did use, and you saw my other video with the dome. This is great for snorkeling. This is great for 60 foot depth, that kind of thing. But again, it does create some lift and it can get banged around a lot. This will allow you to add lights, more professional look, and get a more stabilized shot. I would rate them like this. GoPro 11 would win. GoPro 9 and Action 2 would be very close and running. And then the X3 would be last for image quality. All right, just to show you what this guy looks like. I added the, now inside here, you do add your little, whoops, the anti-defogger. There's a little spot in here. What you don't want to do is actually touch the camera with any wet hands and then put it in here. Uh, you want the camera completely dry while it's in here because otherwise it'll start getting hot and that water it's touching the camera will start steaming up and then it will increase the fog you have inside your camera. I already got it banged around a little bit. If you can see some of the scratches, it's hard to keep these dome plastic things actually clean. Even though they come with cases, you won't have this case on when you're about to go diving. It'll be on your kit somewhere and it'll be banging around, hitting stuff as you go into the water, hit your regulator, all that kind of stuff. And it will start getting marked up. This is just the way, I don't know how to avoid it unless you're just extremely, extremely careful. So in post, I played around with AquaVision 2.0 and I played around with Clarity, Clarity, it's called Clarity Plus, Color Plus, Color Plus and the Clarity Plus are pretty much for folks that don't want to do any editing afterwards. So they'll try that and that's it. They don't really touch it up to that point. If you're really gonna play with it on your own, you probably just leave it alone, don't add anything and then in post, play around with the colors and try to get some of the reds back and all that kind of stuff. Which one do I recommend? If I was gonna bring one camera out diving, I would take the GoPro. Now, depending on how deep I was going, I would probably go to something like this, but I would wanna have a way to get some light out there. So I'd probably mount this onto something like that, a little bit smaller, a little easier to use. 
then put some lights on top here. That's probably what I do. I probably put the GoPro 11 on this mount with lights and keep it a little more of a lower profile. Uh, if I'm doing more some surface stuff where I'm not gonna be breaking the surface like snorkeling, absolutely snorkeling. When you break the surface and you get that water level right here, this is where that plays into.
All right, what did you think of the footage? Let me know down below what you thought. And you guys still here? Wow. Hmm. Look around, man. Come back on the December 15th for our drawing and other exciting stuff after that. So subscribe and like. If you watch this long, yeah, it's a must. All right. See you later. <laughs>